Let's see a car. Good morning, car. Good morning, everyone. It's a beautiful day south of Tucson, Arizona. 25 degrees. I'm going up to the day in uh, Celsius, mind you. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to visit a scenic byway as an over an hour's drive, and then the Titan Missile Museum, hopefully. And after that, uh, I don't know. Let's see what happens. So, yeah, looking forward to it. Before I started driving down this road, uh, I parked at a supermarket and uh, mounted the cameras. And a guy came up to me and asked me um, who I was shooting for, uh, what production it was, or something like that. And I, I said, well, it's uh, it's just my home video, my vacation video. But apparently I looked like someone who knew what the hell he was doing. <laughs> Must have been a coincidence. Um, I, was bit, I was a bit in my introvert mode this morning, so I didn't manage to pull off a good conversation, but well, it happens sometimes. Anyway, do you know that people who drive in a Corvette, they wave to each other when they pass, pass each other on the street? I'm trying to remember that when I see one. Uh, I'm not always successful, but I'm, 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 I am trying. <laughs> um, sometimes I almost get triggered by the wrong car. <laughs> uh, anyway, what do you think of this uh, scenic byway? I think... Um, not trying to sound ungrateful here, but um, uh, maybe I'm I'm here at the wrong time of year. It's mid March, uh, and um, um, maybe I should be here early summer or late, well, early fall or something like that. Um, I don't know. Um, I'll make a video about this uh, road so you can see more of it uh, and post that to my playlist about America scenic byways at some point. Uh, not right now, but. Um, later when i'm done <laughs> with the with these other videos so well now i think it's time to uh, check out the uh, titan 2 missile museum so uh, let's head over there Museum. Oh yeah. In 700 feet, arrive at Titan Missile Museum. Okay. Arrive at Titan Missile Museum. Yes. Arrive. Thank you, Siri. Welcome to the uh, Titan II Missile Museum. Um, I'm not going to go through the entire history and technical details of this thing because there's actually plenty of videos on YouTube that does that already and better than I would be able to anyway. So I'm just going to link to some of them so you can watch them for yourself. Um, there's even a channel, uh, a guy who has born an old <laughs> one of these old silos and trying to restore it and make it into a home. And uh, I'll link to, link to his channel as well so you can see that. Um, what I am going to do is to share with you my experience of visiting this museum because it's uh, well, it's uh, it's quite interesting, I think. So let's get started.
Now, the first thing you should do is get your ticket for a tour. I think they start every half hour. They do have longer tours, but those are not every day. So check their website. They have one where you can climb down ladders to the bottom of a silo. <laughs> I'd like to try that, but yeah, it wasn't possible for me. So, And while you wait for the tour, there's a small exhibit you can check out. Uh, meanwhile, the tour starts with a, uh, a small uh, film about the Titan II missile and... Well, the concept of mutually assured destruction, <laughs> um, not a joyful topic, I suppose. And um, after that, you are going out to the silo itself. Um, if you are above what, six feet one, I think you will be getting a hard hat because it's um, it's a bit of cramped space down there and um, you can hit your head. Um, they talked about people who are afraid of heights could take the elevator down and well I'm, I'm not fond of heights but it didn't seem to be an issue for me i'd rather say if you have claustrophobia uh, might not be uh, the best choice <laughs> to go down there after walking down the stairs uh, the first thing you see are the blast doors and they talk about the procedures you had to go through when it was in operation to enter the complex and it was something about the first door opens you enter it and then that closes and the second door opens so that if something happened while the door was open the integrity of the whole complex will still be intact you're then headed for the control room where they show you how the things work down there and they talk about the procedure they went through if they were going to launch a missile uh, and one lucky guest, I suppose we could call it that, gets to do a simulated launch. One thing I found interesting was that the people down there, they didn't knew who they were going to nuke. They just knew that they were going to fire against one out of three destinations. And they were also told if it should be a ground burst or an air burst, depending on what types of damage uh, they wanted. The coordinates for the missile were delivered by punch tapes, with which is like a, a paper tape style thing with holes in it. So when it was updated, you didn't get to see where it was pointed at. And I don't know if that makes it easier to turn the key and push the button. Uh, we are talking about mutually assured destruction here. So supposedly it's a retaliation measure and you know that there's a missile going your way and well, you're sending a missile their way to make sure that, well, everyone is dead on both sides. So, um, hey, <laughs> it's a kind of grim thing to talk about, but that is the reality we still live in to this day. And then you're headed off to the missile itself. It is almost complete. Uh, it lacks, of course, the fuel to fly and uh, the warhead to explode. As a part of the agreement with the USSR at the time, this missile is uh, has a hole cut through it in the top, so you can see that it's not armed, and the blast doors on top are stuck at halfway open, so everyone can come and see that this one is no longer working. When these silos were decommissioned, they, of course, emptied all equipment out of it, and then they set off an explosion in the missile silo. After which they let the crater open for a few months so the Russian spy satellites could snap photos and see that it indeed they had been decommissioned. But this one uh, got sort of saved so with the agreement that they, they made sure that it was clear to everyone that it wasn't working anymore. There's plenty of time on the tour for you to take pictures and videos and I regret I only brought my iPhone 7 which I used to record this and that is why it looks a bit... Nah, <laughs> uh, cell phones still have problems in load light um, environments, it seems. Well, after the tour is done, you have hopefully learned a lot. And if you listen to the guide, then when you're going above ground again, uh, all the things on top will suddenly make sense. So you will know what they are and why they are there, um, like some of the security systems and the antennas. Uh, and one interesting thing about those were that they might not be able to take a direct hit with a nuke but uh, a near miss uh, they might survive that and the antennas might get flattened to the ground and if that happened they would have a, a special antenna that was almost a ground height an fm radio uh, that could receive signals from an above 
plane flying over so they still could get orders to launch. Well, that about concludes the tour. Um, I could continue to talk about this thing, but instead, as I said, I'll link to some videos if you want more information about um, the Titan II missile. Um, I think it was very interesting to see, and uh, it's kind of weird because I like to see the technology that was involved in the engineering, uh, and so it was very exciting to see, and at the same time, it you hear, all the time got this chills down my spine when you think about why it's there, you know, um, but if you are in the area, uh, well, even a detour, I think, would be worth it to visit this place. Uh, because even though this missile is no longer functional, the concept of mutually assured destruction and countries nuking each other is still very much a real threat still today. And I think it's healthy for us to recognize that and and, and, and realize that, that this is a part of our the world we are living in, right? I was supposed to go driving up another scenic byway today, but quite frankly, I didn't feel like it. So I got a very late lunch, uh, early dinner uh, combined here. And uh, I went back to the hotel and emptied my SD cards. And well, that's just the end of this day. Tomorrow is day six and I am headed for what I suppose you could call my home away from home by now, village of Oak Creek, south of Sedona. I hope you enjoyed this, although <laughs> the topic wasn't all smiles and sunshine, but um, well, at least I hope it was informational or something like that. So yeah, until next time, have fun on the interwebs.